This video demonstrates how to render geometric forms. Rendering is basically the process of applying tone to a 3D object to make it look solid and realistic. Before we can render any forms, uh, the first task you need to do is to practice how to apply tone using by producing a tonal scale. So on the screen you can see I've begun to sketch a flat tonal scale. A flat tonal scale consists of five squares, which you need to sketch in your jotter. If you, it's helpful to number the squares from one to five. And the idea is we want to apply tone using a black and white, using a black pencil, an HB pencil or a colored pencil, so that that tone progressively gets darker as it goes from one to five. So I've started to apply a light tone to square one. You'll notice I'm holding the pencil overhand, so that I'm using the side of the pencil to get a nice even coverage. Then I've went straight to five, which is the darkest tone. So now I'm pressing much harder, still using overhand grip, but pressing harder on the paper. And I'll go over it several times to get this tone as dark as possible. Sometimes you'll notice it's worth changing to just a normal um, grip, which allows you to apply even more pressure to get a darker tone. The next square that you want to render is the middle square, square 3, because we have the extreme, it's on either end, the limit's on either end, we've got light and dark, and the idea is we want 3 to be halfway between 1 and 5 in terms of the, the appearance of its tone. And then we would go ahead and do 2, trying to get its tone in between 1 and 3. You might find you have to make adjustments. Um, so that you get a clear progression from five, from one to five. Once you've rendered it, if you could get a straight edge or a ruler and darken the outline, that just gives a neater appearance to the tonal scale. The second type of uh, tonal scale is called a gradient tonal scale. And this is basically what you would use if you've got curved surfaces. Flat tonal scale is obviously flat surfaces on an object, but what if we've got curved surfaces with them and that light basically reflects off the surface going from a gradual, gradual change from dark to light. So the idea is you draw a rectangle and we render it using overhand grip, gradually press, pressing hard to begin with and less hard as we come away from the, the left hand side so that we get this gradual change in tone, this gradient in tone. And you have to work at it enough to get a good effect. Make sure as well that you have a actual, it actually fades out to, to nothing on the right hand side. And then get a ruler and darken the outline to make it stand out. So the flat tonal scale, any surface that has flat surfaces like a cube, we would use flat tones. If we've got an object that has curved surfaces, we would use gradient tone. So now we're on to um, sketching the the forms, the cuboids or boxes that you sketched earlier on. And what I want you to do is I want you to render them. So the idea is we start by applying a light tone to the top face and then a dark tone to the right hand side face. So number one tone for the top, number five for the right hand side. Try to stay inside the outline Try and make sure that you get a nice, neat 
sort of fill or coverage of the colour. You can use coloured pencils. You don't necessarily need to use your HB pencil or a black pencil. Just so happens I'm using a black pencil. So I've got uh, two limits. We can then apply tone 3 to the left hand side to complete the rendered effect. The idea is there's a there's a clear difference between tone 1, 3 and 5. And you notice I have to go over 3 just to get it that little bit darker to make sure that we have a good contrast between tones. Again, remember to get your ruler. But if you don't have a ruler, use a straight edge and darken the outline to make the rendered sketch stand out from the white paper. And I want you to do that all three boxes that you've sketched in your jotter. Now, to finish off, we're going to render three ge geometric forms, starting with the cylinder. Again, you should have sketched this in your jotter. So we want to apply a gradient tone to the front surface, running in a vertical direction. So it's dark at the left-hand side edge. And as I come away from that edge, it gradually begins to fade out. And this gives the impression that light is shining on this surface and fading out because of its curved, curved um, shape. On the other side again, we want to have it dark and gradually fading out to nothing. Make sure you don't join the two bands, the left hand side band gradient band, the right hand side gradient band. There should be a nice white area roughly in the middle or slightly to the left of the middle of the cylinder. Again, take some care to get it nice and even all the way along its length and get it to gradually change at the right rate. Once you've finished, get your ruler and outline it. And you will notice the difference when you outline your rendered sketches. It really makes a big difference to how it looks. Now the cone is similar to the cylinder. The only difference being that you're going to apply your gradient tone at an angle along the, the edge of the cone and it will be slightly wider at the bottom than it is at the top. But again, trying to get this gradual gradient where it goes from dark to light as it comes away from that edge. And just with the cylinder, do the same on the other side to finish the effect. Taking care get a nice gradual change in the tone. Remember to leave a white bit in the middle. Actually contrast with the white and dark is what really makes it stand out and look three dimensional. And last we have a pyramid which basically consists of flat tones. So on the right hand side I've speeded it up here. I make it nice and dark. And the left hand side, so that would be maybe tone 5. And then tone 2 or 1 on the left hand side face. Get a ruler and outline it to make it stand.